Hey guys, my name is Andre Kernouch, and I'll be walking you through the new project reporting system. To begin, you're going to want to visit this URL here. It's tpp.org forward slash proj report. This page asks for four basic pieces of identification to verify you're a member. So we can choose a chapter. I'll just do myself here. Now it's important to note that the hardest part of this is usually your graduation year. So when you are initiated, we might have a different year than you actually graduated if you were earlier or later. So if you can't get it on the first time, maybe try a year above or below what you think it is. And if that doesn't work, you can email us and we'll identify it for you. Once this step is done, you can just click Next Step. Now this page has several aspects. The first thing to note is that this dashboard is for your whole chapter. It's not just for yourself. You'll be able to view projects that everyone has created. You just won't be able to modify any of them. However, you will be able to modify the project reports that you have created. So the first drop down we can look at is simply a year selection. So when we go into the next semester, you'll be able to look back on previous projects and build off of those. This is very helpful for new officers and new members. It defaults to the current year, and since the system is just now being released, you will likely not have any projects from the previous year. Now the second menu is the actual project reports themselves. When you click on it, you'll see that includes all the reports created by your chapter. The ones marked in this light blue color actually mean the ones that you have created, so these are the ones you can actually modify. Now the first button that we'll look at is the Create New Report button, and we'll go over what actually goes into a report itself. When you click on Create a New Report, you'll see that almost everything is empty and ready for you to fill out. The project report itself is split into three different tabs, so we just have an Info tab, the actual description of the projects, and then any additional attachments that you would like to upload for this project. While I'm not going to fill it out completely, there are a few features that I want to go over. So the first feature is that you can actually save at any time or any point and come back later. So as an example, I'll just put the project name and you can click the Save Report button. And you'll see that the name is still there and you can come back to it at any time. And this works for any other part of the report itself. Another thing to note is that you have some customizability with the project areas and participants. So for example, if you have a project area does not fall in under one of these. You can click on other and the first thing you'll see is a drop down and if your chapter has already made their own custom categories you'll see them here but as you can see the chapter hasn't made any and you can click on custom category and put in your own. Another place for customizability is the participants. You can see that members and electees are required and you cannot change those as categories but if you want to add custom categories you can click this plus sign here and as you can see, it allows up to three categories. And similar to the project areas, if you see the drop-down, you'll see actual custom categories that your chapter has already used before. And you can go ahead and click one of these. The other option is to click on custom category and add your own if your chapter has not already put it in the drop-down menu. Now, these drop-down menus are useful to avoid spelling something in 50 different ways across the whole chapter. So here's just an example of where alumni has been spelled two different ways. And with the drop-down, hopefully you can avoid that and come to a consensus on one spelling for the whole chapter. Scrolling down further, we can see the actual description of the project. Once again, this is self-guided by just scrolling over them. You can see the tooltips that have leading questions to help you fill out these boxes. You can see there's a character limit of 2,000 for some of these and a character limit of 500 for others. These limits are actually quite high and there's no requirement to meet these limits. As long as you're concise and describing the project for each of these categories, you'll be fine. Now the last panel is the attachments panel. The first section is a list of participants. As you can see, you have a variety of file extensions that are allowed. So taking photos or the most popular form is just simply an Excel or Google Doc sheet that's been exported to Excel. The next section is the attachments. The important thing to note is that you're only allowed PNG, JPEGs, or PDFs. If you upload a PDF file, only the first page will be inserted into the actual report. So it's mainly intended for images. You're allowed up to five files per each report, and you can't exceed 10 megabytes. 
The two rows below will actually keep track of your file sizes and make sure you don't exceed 10 megabytes. So as you can see, I've selected some files here, but I have not uploaded them yet. So here's my participant list, and then I have selected two files. Now for each attachment, you're allowed to put a quick caption or description uh, describing the actual contents of the photo. When you're satisfied with the captions and the uploads that you've selected the right ones, to upload them, you have to click the Save Report button, and you'll see a visual change. So we'll go ahead and do that. So as you can see, each one becomes a link. And even for the list of participants, the option to upload anything has been removed because you've already uploaded it. If you want to upload a different list of participants, you would have to re first remove this one, and then it would appear again. And as you can see, we haven't met the limit for the file size or the number of attachments, so we're allowed to upload any more attachments if we wanted to in the future. Another important thing to note is that you can actually click on these links to retrieve the content. So when I click on participants, it actually downloads the participant list. And for the attachments, when you click on them, it'll open up in a new tab, the actual attachment. Another important thing to note is that if you want to update the caption or change it, you can come back in here change the caption and simply click save report and as the page refreshes you see that the caption has been updated now at any point in the report creation process you can generate a PDF of your report to see what it's going to look like when it's placed in the annual report at the end of the year and sent to headquarters so I'm going to go ahead and click this button and you'll see it says it might take several seconds so just be a little bit patient with it and once it finishes, you'll see it comes back to the default blue. You'll notice that nothing happened. However, if you come up here, you can see that a pop-up was blocked. And you're going to want to allow this pop-up. And when you generate the report again, since the pop-up won't be blocked, it'll just open up in a new tab. And you can actually go through and see the current status of your report as a PDF file. When you've finished a report completely, you will see this button all the way at the bottom that says save and submit for review. And what this does is it submits the report for review by one of your chapter officers. Some of your chapter officers will have a different portal and they'll actually be able to go in to see the ones you've submitted for review. They'll be able to review them and then mark them as finished. Now when you go back to the dashboard and go to the second drop down menu, you'll see that there's actually three different statuses that your project can be in. So the first is a red status called reports that have not been submitted for review. And this essentially tells you, other members and officers, that you're simply still working on this report. You may have only done a couple sections and you want to save it and come back to it later. So this will be marked in red. Now the second status is a yellow status called reports that have been submitted for review. And reports are placed in the status once the button that you saw previously is clicked. And these need to be reviewed by officers. And the third and final status is a green status and it says reports that have been marked as finished. And as I said, these are reports that have been reviewed by an officer. And these are the reports that are actually going to appear in the annual report at the end of the year and used for evaluation at convention to give out project awards. Now some other features that I want to touch on before we wrap up. First of all is, as you're looking through this list, it can get cluttered depending on how many projects your chapter does. So you can actually search by just typing and you can kind of limit it down to certain projects that you want to look at. You can even do it by timeline by just typing in the number or the date. The second feature deals with previous year reports. So Tennessee Alpha actually used this system last year, so they do have reports. So if I click on 2018 projects, you'll see that the dropdown is a whole another set of projects that were done last year actually. When you're looking at previous year projects, you will not be able to edit them at all. So if I click view, even on the project that I have made, if I click on view slash edit, the only option is to go back to the dashboard. Now the last feature is a pretty helpful feature and it works for current projects and previous year projects. And it helps you get a template of a report that has been already done previously so that you don't have to come up with everything from scratch. So as an example, we'll look at projects from last year and we'll select a scholarship point system. Now we'll click on the duplicate report button as you can see, it marks the report as duplicate in parentheses, so you know it's not the same one. And you can also save it because you are the new creator of this report.
Now the first thing to note is that the project information has been cleared out partially. So some of the big things are the actual number of people who participated, the actual dates of the project, and it's also encouraged to take out this duplicate in the project name if it's from a previous year or change the project name completely if it's from the same year to avoid any confusion. You can see that the project area has been retained, the project type, and the hours spent per person. As we scroll down, you'll see that the actual project description section has been retained as well. So all the text from the previous project has been saved in case you want to build off of it or use it as a guideline for this project that you just did. And lastly, all the attachments have been cleared out, so you'll have to upload your own participant list and your own set of attachments. Now when you go back to the current year and look at the duplicate in the drop-down, you'll see that it has the name and the word duplicate just as we saw it earlier. You'll see that the project does not have a date because it gets cleared out when, when you create a duplicate project. And to look back at it, you can click on it here, click View Edit Report. Again, you can duplicate reports from the current year as well. So as an example, if we go to October Bent Decoration and we click on Duplicate Report, same process happens again. However, since it's the same year, it really doesn't make sense to have two October Bent projects. So you might want to rename it to something, say, December Bent Decoration. And lastly, because I'm not sure if I touched on it, you can click on any of these reports, click on View Edit, and if you're the creator, you'll actually be able to click Save and edit the project. And if you just want to see what other people have done in your chapter, but you're not the creator of the report, you can still click View Edit, and you'll just be able to view everything they've done. But you will not be able to actually edit it. You'll just have the option to go back to the dashboard. However, if the project had a lot of useful information that you'd like to build off of, again, you can click on the project and click Duplicate Report. It'll create a new project under your name, and then you can build off of it however you choose. So that's my walkthrough of the new project reporting system. I hope it helped you guys, and if you have any questions or if you find any bugs, most importantly, feel free to email the two emails shown on screen, and I'll be happy to address those concerns. Thank you.